When I was a kid on Christmas Eve, our family tradition was that we would have my grandpa and grandma Zasky come to our house for supper and, of course, for the opening of the Christmas presents afterwards. And every year, just like clockwork, grandpa and grandma would arrive at 4 p.m. My brothers and I, uh, we would stand out in the middle of our street. We'd be looking northward and just watching and waiting for their car to make the turn onto Division Street and then ultimately uh, the turn into our driveway. Well, my, my grandparents had a very recognizable car. For, for those of you that are my age or, or, or older, you may, uh, possibly remember, uh, this kind of car. The AMC Gremlin. Uh, I have a picture here of a forest green, uh, Gremlin. And it is the exact replica, this picture, of the, the fine vehicle that would come uh, rolling down on Division Street uh, every December 24th at 4 p.m. My dad had one brother who was 13 years younger than he, uh, my Uncle Kevin. And Uncle Kevin was still in high school, so he would come along with Grandma and Grandpa each year. And what was so funny was that the gremlin didn't have a lot of extra room to be, you know, to begin with. And, and it kind of looked, uh, like this picture each year. They'd have it just loaded up with presents. My poor uncle Kevin always looked like one of those Garfield the cat toys in the window. Remember those? Ah, uh, that's, that's what he would look like as he, as he climbed his way out of the, out of the back seat. Uh, you remember those? Uh, anyhow, uh, in the picture I showed you of that car just stuffed with, with Christmas presents, uh, that is not, by the way, an exaggeration. That is basically how their car looked each and every year. My grandma, God bless her, was one of those people who went ridiculously overboard every year at Christmas. And really, my grandparents were relatively poor, uh, probably in part because of all the money they spent way too much uh, each December on Christmas gifts for their grandchildren. And, and the Zasky brothers, of which I was one, we did not just have three or four gifts to open on Christmas Eve. No, no, no. We seriously, and, and I'm not stretching the truth here when I tell you this, we seriously would have 15 to 20 presents to open, oftentimes more. Now, now I won't lie. I'm not, I'm not going to lie here. When I, when I was like eight years of age, I loved it. Who wouldn't? Watching Uncle Kevin haul in armful after armful of presents into our house was, was magical. My, my smile was as wide as a Mack truck. Again, I, I just loved it. But all these years later, I can't look back at those Christmas Eves with much fondness. And, and the reason is simply this. It was too much. Way too much. The huge pile of presents with my name on them really didn't add to Christmas as much as they detracted from Christmas. The plethora of presents didn't enhance the day. They distorted it. They distorted me. Uh, what greedy little eight-year-old me didn't know, and, and perhaps what I couldn't know at that age, and, and, in, and in that particular setup, was that the greatest treasures hauled to our house in the old green gremlin were not the new Vikings pajamas or the Rock'em Sock'em robots. No, the, the real treasures hauled to our house in that gremlin were the people in the car. Grandpa Zasky with his quiet, gentle ways. Grandma Zasky with all of her 
nervous energy. Uncle Kevin Zasky in, in his poor, uh, contorted body, uh, getting out of that car because of all those presents. I mean, that was the real treasure of the night. Just their being with us, all of us being together. That's what made Christmas Eve, uh, the gathering something special. But again, I was eight years old. I couldn't see it. I was too busy salivating at the thought of opening all those presents. And, and I know Grandma Zasky meant well. I, I, I forgive her for her excesses. She had good intentions. But there's an old saying about a certain road uh, being paved with good intentions. And you, you likely know that saying. Well, anyhow, as we sit here tonight, having having just celebrated the, the strangest Christmas any of us have likely experienced just, just a few days ago, I think we're all realizing more and more what a treasure other people are and just what a privilege it is to be able to gather together in the same room with the same people who are in important to us. I, I myself, I did not open a single present on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day this year. And you know what? It was fine. It, it was more than fine. It, it was actually exhilarating. It was, it was freeing. It allowed me to focus on the reason for Christmas with, with no distractions. Uh, the birth of my Savior long ago in Bethlehem. That Savior that I speak of, our Lord Jesus, once said this. He said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My friends, this Christmas, this pandemic Christmas, I pray that it has helped us to see what is truly treasure and what is not. The baby boy born to Mary and Joseph, the ultimate treasure. The people around us, our loved ones, absolute treasures. Stuff, Vikings pajamas and Rock'em Sock'em Robots, eh, not so much. Dear people of God, I wish you a continued blessed holiday Christmas and New Year's season, and may you recognize the true treasures in your life. Amen.